China just launched its 88th rocket this year. That's more missions in 12 months than most countries achieve in a decade. Their launch tempo jumped 30% compared to last year, and they're doubling their orbital payloads year over year. So what's their secret? How did they crack the code that took SpaceX years to master? The answer isn't more money or better engineers. It's something borrowed straight from your local car factory, a manufacturing system so efficient it could reshape the entire space race. Let's dive right in. On December 20th, a Long March 5 rocket tore through the night sky from Launch Complex 101. This wasn't just another mission. It was China's 88th orbital launch of the year, the 618th in the Long March series. For context, that's more launches than Russia, Europe, and Japan combined. But here's what really caught attention at the Pentagon. China doubled their satellite deployments compared to last year while cutting production time in half. Brigadier General Brian Sidari from the U.S. Space Force didn't mince words. It is concerning how fast they've done it. He wasn't talking about one rocket or one company. He was talking about an entire industrial ecosystem that's rewriting the rules of aerospace manufacturing. So what changed? The breakthrough happened when Chinese aerospace engineers stopped thinking like rocket scientists and started thinking like car manufacturers. Traditional aerospace runs on what's called a push system. Factories build components months or years ahead based on forecasts. Engines get made in January for a launch planned in October. Fuel tanks sit in warehouses waiting for assembly. Electronics age on shelves. When launch dates slip or designs change, those parts become expensive paperweights. The U.S. aerospace industry has burned billions on this model. China flipped the entire process. They adopted final assembly pull straight from Toyota's playbook. Nothing gets built until final assembly actually needs it. When they start assembling a rocket, that's when the order goes out for engines. Engine production triggers parts manufacturing. Parts manufacturing pulls raw materials. Every component moves because something downstream demands it right now. Think about the efficiency gain. SpaceX builds about 90 Falcon 9 boosters per year using advanced methods. But even they deal with parts inventory and timing issues. China's new system eliminates that friction entirely. No warehouses full of aging components. No production schedules based on optimistic forecasts. Just pure demand-driven manufacturing flowing like water through a pipeline. The sandwich shop comparison from the original research actually understates the impact. In aerospace, wasted components don't just cost money, they cost years of specialized labor. A rocket engine that sits unused for 18 months doesn't just lose value, it needs recertification, retesting, potential refurbishment. Under the pull system, that engine gets built exactly when needed, tested once, and installed immediately. The time savings compound at every level. Here's the part that should worry SpaceX. China isn't doing this with one company. The China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation is orchestrating an entire national network. State-owned enterprises, research institutes, private suppliers, all connected through digital platforms with real-time visibility. When a final assembly line in Wenchang needs nine engines, the system automatically triggers production across multiple facilities. AI-driven smart factories reconfigure their assembly lines on the fly instead of running fixed production schedules. What does this enable? Scale that would be impossible under traditional methods. China is building three massive satellite constellations simultaneously. Guo Wang with 13,000 satellites, Chen Fan, and Honggu 3. Together, they're targeting over 38,000 satellites to challenge Starlink's dominance. Under the old push system, building that many satellites would take decades and require massive warehouses. Under pull manufacturing, they're projecting completion by the early 2030s. But manufacturing efficiency only matters if you can actually launch the hardware. That's where China hit a wall. In 2024, the U.S. launched 158 missions, mostly through SpaceX. China managed 68 despite having more rocket models and launch sites. The bottleneck wasn't technology, it was infrastructure and process. The Chinese government saw the problem and made a decisive move. In 2014, they cracked open sectors that had been state monopolies for 60 years. Earth observation, commercial launches, satellite services, 
suddenly opened to private investment. The effect wasn't immediate, but by 2025, the strategy is paying dividends. Over 200 Chinese space startups have emerged in the last decade, backed by venture capital that didn't exist in this sector five years ago. Companies like CAS Space and Landspace are testing reusable first stages right now. Others like Cosmo Leap and Yushi Space are developing mid-air catch systems that mirror SpaceX's Mechazilla arms. The first dedicated commercial spaceport on Hainan Island just opened, giving private companies direct orbital access without competing for government launch pads. This is where the competitive dynamics get interesting. In the U.S., any startup trying to build a Falcon 9 competitor faces an impossible challenge. They're not competing against an idea. They're competing against the actual Falcon 9, which launches every three days, has proven reliability, and dominates the market. Investors ask the obvious question, why spend $500 million to maybe capture 10% of a market SpaceX already owns? China doesn't have that problem. Being reusable in Chinese is enough to attract government contracts and strategic investment. These companies aren't trying to beat SpaceX on performance. They're trying to establish domestic launch capability that doesn't depend on foreign technology. The goal is in market competition, it's strategic autonomy. And that changes the entire calculation. The U.S. space industry operates on profit margins and return on investment. Chinese space companies operate under a different mandate. Build the infrastructure China needs to become the dominant space power by 2045. When profit isn't the primary metric, you can make investments that look crazy from a pure business perspective, but make perfect sense strategically. Consider the implications. SpaceX achieved its position through innovation under market pressure. They had to be better and cheaper to survive. China's approach is to create an entire industrial ecosystem that doesn't need any single company to be as good as SpaceX. They need the collective output to match or exceed U.S. capacity. It's mass production versus artisan craftsmanship, and history shows us how that competition usually ends. The pull manufacturing system is the foundation, but the real weapon is the integration. Every Chinese space company, whether state-owned or private, feeds into the same national digital infrastructure. Launch schedules, component inventories, testing facilities, everything visible in real time across the entire network. When CAS space develops a better engine design, that knowledge flows to land space within weeks, not years. When a government satellite needs a faster launch, the system identifies which commercial company has the nearest available slot. This is fundamentally different from how the U.S. space industry operates. American companies jealously guard their intellectual property. SpaceX doesn't share Raptor engine designs with Blue Origin. Boeing doesn't coordinate SLS production with ULA. Each company optimizes for its own success, not national capacity. That independence drives innovation, but limits scale. China sacrifices some innovation speed for coordination benefits. Their rockets might not be as advanced as Falcon 9 yet, but they're building the production infrastructure to manufacture them like automobiles. And once that infrastructure is fully operational, the gap in capability becomes less important than the gap in production volume. The question isn't whether China can build a better rocket than SpaceX. The question is whether they can build enough rockets fast enough to establish facts on the ground in orbit before anyone can respond. With pull manufacturing, connecting hundreds of suppliers, AI-driven smart factories, and a government willing to fund strategic losses, they're building exactly that capability. So here's what we're really watching unfold. This isn't just about China building faster rockets. It's about two completely different philosophies colliding in orbit. The U.S. bet everything on a few exceptional companies pushing the limits of what's possible. China is betting on an interconnected industrial machine that doesn't need to be exceptional, it just needs to be relentless. SpaceX launches a Falcon 9 every three days, and it's absolutely remarkable. But China just launched 88 times in one year, using a system that's still ramping up. They're applying the same manufacturing revolution that let them dominate solar panels, electric vehicles, and consumer electronics. And if history teaches us anything, it's that mass production eventually wins against craftsmanship, no matter how brilliant that craftsmanship is. The real race isn't who builds the best rocket. It's who builds enough rockets to control the infrastructure that will define the next century. 
communications, navigation, earth observation, space resources. Whoever has the production capacity to fill those orbits first writes the rules everyone else has to follow. By 2030, we might look back at 2025 as the year the space race fundamentally changed. The year China stopped chasing SpaceX's technology and started building something bigger, an assembly line for space dominance. What do you think? Can American innovation stay ahead of Chinese industrial scale? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If this breakdown added value, hit that like button and share it with anyone following the space industry. And subscribe to Space Update 24 hours because this story is just getting started and you won't want to miss what happens next. SpaceX just landed the same Falcon 9 booster for the 25th time. 25 orbital flights on one piece of hardware. Meanwhile, Blue Origin launched another New Shepard mission last week, the exact same 10-minute suborbital hop they've been flying since 2021. Same altitude, same profile, same limitations. How did we get here? Two companies started just two years apart, both landing rockets in 2015, both talking about the future of spaceflight, yet one is launching twice a week while the other is still selling brief tourist rides to the edge of space. What happened between 2015 and now that turned equals into a competition that isn't even close anymore? Let's dive right in. A few days ago, Blue Origin launched another New Shepard mission. The rocket lifted off, crossed the Karman line at just over 100 kilometers, gave six passengers about three minutes of weightlessness, and landed 10 minutes after liftoff. Nothing broke, nothing failed. Everything went exactly as planned. But here's the problem. This is the exact same mission profile Blue Origin has been flying since 2021. The same altitude, the same flight duration, the same BE-3 engine, the same booster landing sequence they've now repeated more than 20 times. So what's actually being tested here? What new capability is being demonstrated? The honest answer is nothing. The BE-3 engine has accumulated dozens of flights without any meaningful upgrades. The capsule systems are mature. The recovery procedures are identical every time. Blue Origin isn't pushing any envelope anymore. 